Okay, hello YouTube slash fuck you Google Plus. Um, this is the Canadian Greek coming at you with ISON update number 13. Um, if you guys haven't seen uh, ISON updates 12A and ISON update 12B, have a look at that because this is basically a continuation of that. And if you haven't seen it, you're going to be missing out on a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, over the last couple of days, I've been doing some thinking. Um, about um, ISON and uh, the model that I projected that I think ISON is definitely planet sized I think it's the size of our moon and uh, based on those based on that model I was thinking about um, why ISON hadn't brightened um, for over 135 days um, it, even uh, up until uh, November the 14th when it started getting slammed um, with uh, X flare after X flare after X flare um, after all those coronal mass ejections. Sorry, not X flares, but uh, X class CMEs um, for four days straight. Uh, it was getting hammered, and that's when it really exploded. Uh, not literally into broke into pieces, but that's when it literally brightened uh, significantly. Um, let's have a look at what I'm talking about. Um, Comet Ison is not brightening as much as expected as it zooms toward the sun. An amateur astronomer has reported dealing uh, a blow to sky watchers hoping for a spectacular show from the icy wanderer during its close solar approach in this November. By the way, this article was written on August 16th. Okay, Comet Ison forecast for potential comet of the century looks dim. Um, this is when uh, Bruce Gary caught the image, caught Ison, he was the first person to catch Ison, okay, um, after it uh, came out from behind the sun and it was visible again, okay, um, if you guys remember, Ison had remained dormant pretty much for a, for at least a three month period, actually it had brightened very little all the way from uh, January or, uh, or March of uh, this year, it had brightened very little. Um, and I have a theory as to why that is now, which also fits in with the model that I have um, created for Ison being the size of the moon, um, or basically planet-sized, okay, because Mercury is just a little larger than our moon and very much denser. Um, and because I believe Ison is also dense, I believe it has a magnetosphere, just like Earth does. And the reason why it hadn't brightened or remained dormant for so long Okay, um, since uh, March or April um, of uh, 2013, it remained dormant. It didn't brighten very much because it had a magnetosphere. And according to the electric comet model, it wasn't being hit by protons or as many of them as it should have been in order to make it brighten the way it did. Of course, on November the 14th, it was struck. By CME, by CME after CME, and you know X class CMEs over and over and over, which of course brought it to a 3.68 total V magnitude. Okay, um, that also all of that fits into my um, electric comet. It fits in with the electric comet model perfectly, and it explains and it further explains, I should say, um, the size of Ison uh, that I believe it is definitely planet sized it is very large um, how large I cannot say I think it is the size of our moon it could be larger um, it could have it could be the same size as earth I don't know uh, I don't have a I don't have a radio telescope I don't have access to such equipment um, which could by the way tell us everything that we need to know somebody knows but they're not sharing what they do know um, now, because it has a magnetosphere, if you guys remember uh, what I showed you guys in the last uh, in the last update, 12 A and B, uh, because it has a magnetosphere, it, it was not getting bombarded sufficiently with enough protons or um, solar uh, energy um, from the sun in order to make it bright normally, like any like other normal comets that are smaller in um, in diameter. Uh, in mass that don't have this protective magnetosphere to protect them from the solar radiation okay or the solar wind now all that fits in with my with my model that comet ison is not a small body it is very large 
and that's and that and this further explains its behavior okay why I believe well I believe from the very beginning that is that this thing was very large if you see my previous update you'll understand now let's have a look at something else shall we because I think this too is important okay here is comet ice on where it is today on the 26th and here is uh, to be Enki all right now if you look at where it is here I have them exactly similarly aligned okay um, so if we look at where Comet Ison is and where Enki is Enki if you let it look at it here is just right above the AU just in here okay um, so if we put the same thing here Enki would be about here all right now look at look at Enki's position compared to Ison. Now I want you to have a look at something else. This is from uh, the Stereo A spacecraft. Okay, images from Stereo A. Now if you remember the what I just showed you here in the databases, Enki again is over here. If we can go and look at Enki, it is over here, right above the A. Okay, and I have these similarly aligned so that you can see something is above the A here, Enki, all right? And look at how far it is from Ison. Now, Stereo, uh, Stereo A, okay, the spacecraft is down here somewhere. And looking at Enki, Mercury, and if we zoom out a little bit further, we'll see Earth, okay? So, Stereo A is over here somewhere. So look at how far closer Enki is from Ison. Now, remember, Enki is right here. It is significantly closer to the Stereo A spacecraft than Ison is, and yet, remember, Enki is closer than Ison, and yet look at the size of Ison compared to Enki. Okay, now, that, this is just a very rough comparison, but Enki looks like, Enki looks pretty dinky compared to Ison. Okay. Look at Enki's tail. Look at how insignificant it is. Look at Ison's tail. It practically goes right off the screen all the way to the end of this image. The tail of Ison is massive. Okay, that does not happen from, you know, a little... And by the way, they say Enki is uh, bigger than Ison. They say Enki is uh, four and a half uh, kilometers uh, radius and Enki area and Ison is is less than that, okay, it's three and a half or something like that. Um, they say Ison is smaller than Enki, and yet look at the difference. And remember, Enki here, um, this was on, this was taken on November 19th to the 23rd, Enki is, two, uh, is 25 and a half million miles closer to the camera, closer to the Stereo A spacecraft than Ison is at this point in time. Okay, and I remember these, these ones here are on the, uh, on the 26th, if we take this back three days to the 23rd, okay, and we take this one back here to the 23rd, okay, and this is the alignment is still the same, okay. Look at where Ison is, it's at a 45 degree angle above Mercury, so it's at a 45 degree angle above Mercury. Ison would be here. Okay, on the 23rd, and that's where that's where Enki would be, and that's what this shows you here. And look at the size difference. That is, well, that's certainly not a five kilometer in diameter object, okay? Because that's what they say Enki is five kilometer, not five kilometers in diameter, and yet is how much closer uh, to the camera at this point? Look at the tail of Enki and look at this and remember this is farther away from Enki in this in this picture look at that. the tail is practically going right off the camera right off the field of view okay that is amazing okay um, anyways that's all I wanted to bring up to you guys uh, just just doing some thinking um, and philosophizing and I thought that was something that you guys should see and something I should bring up by the way, uh, there's one more thing. 
um, with the magnetosphere, with my theory on its magnetosphere and the reason why it has not brightened and uh, the reason why it's behaving the way it's behaving also explains one other aspect of the comet. Um, all this talk about it having a bow shock, okay, that bow shock can also be explained, okay, along with the wings, but this bow shock feature that it, that it uh, developed um, during the four days that it was getting hammered with CME after CME also makes complete sense with the, with the fact that there is a magnetosphere around this object, that it is, um, that it had that it is highly magnetic okay um, that it is very large and has a great mass okay and because of that mass it also has a magnetosphere just like mercury okay and it is very dense uh, all of that makes perfect sense to me at least um, it makes perfect sense now um, a lot of people have been commenting and saying um, and asking me questions um, is are we in any real danger what's really gonna happen some people have been saying that is that this thing is a, either a neutron star or a dwarf or a dwarf star it is neither of those things guys um, if it was it would have been behaving far differently we'd be, we'd be well if it was a neutron star let's put it this way right now Mars would not be there there would have been uh, there been turmoil in the system long before now okay it's none of those things. Um, let's not get let's not get carried away. Let's not get sucked into, um, you know, into the ridiculous. Okay, this it is not a neutron star and it is not a dwarf star. It is a comet, but it is a very large one. Okay, very large, and um, everything I've said thus far, and I've been proven right, like I said, time and time again. Um, Everything that I've said thus far seems to be seems to fit with everything that Comet Ison is doing, the way it's behaving. Um, its behavior is explained by my explanations, by my theories, and it is not explained by some of this other stuff that's been coming out. Okay, um, so we'll see who's proven right. But as, are we in any real danger? I really can't say. Um, I don't think that um, Ison is going to be dipping below the sun. Okay, and coming out at such a high orbit or such a high escape, okay, on its exit trajectory. Um, I don't know if it's going to be 30 million kilometers from Earth when it crosses its orbit. Um, I pray to God. I hope that it's, I hope this is correct and that ISON will not come close to Earth on its uh, on its exit path. Um, this will probably be the last update I'm going to be doing now. It's, it's, 20, it's the 26th, um, unless something earth shattering happens. Um, I will be monitoring ISON and any information that's coming out on it closely. Uh, but now, basically, it's a wait and see situation. Um, I'm going to wait until the 29th or the 30th to see where ISON comes out from behind the sun. And then I'm going to start to see, then we'll know what trajectory it's going to have. Um, whether it's going to take this northerly path away from Earth. Um, I hope so. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. At this point, guys, it's a waiting game. Um, but like I said, everything that I have said thus far is been correct. Now, are we in any danger? If it comes close to Earth, we're in great danger. Um, as far as its inbound path, what kind of um, debris uh, field we're going to be going through when we when we get to about uh, mid-January, I don't know. I cannot speculate on that. I don't have any hard data. And I want to keep my site um, scientific. Um, I don't want to speculate. And when I say that ISON is very large in size, that is not speculation. That is my personal theory. Okay. Um, you guys can take it for what it is. Um, do your own research and check it out for yourselves. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think I'm wrong. I think that ISON is what it is. I think it's a planet-sized comet, and I think that it could cause us great damage if it comes close to Earth. I can't. I, I don't know if it is or it won't. Anyways, we'll have to wait and see, guys. We'll have to wait and see.
Um, this will probably be my last update until about the uh, 28th or 29th, when I will know more. Okay, this is the Canadian Greek. I'm out.